Is your imagination a silent whisper or a roaring movie in your mind? Greetings, dear viewers, and welcome to a journey into the depths of the human mind, where imagination isn't just a fleeting thought, but a vivid, all-consuming experience. Today, we unravel the mystery of hyperphantasia, a condition that grants some people an extraordinary mental cinema. Buckle up as we explore this fascinating world where imagination blurs the lines of reality and fiction. So there I was, lounging on my couch, eyes glued to Apple's WWDC 2024. The screen flickered with futuristic gadgets and tech marvels. Suddenly, in the midst of an augmented reality demo, I noticed something intriguing. A screenshot of a web page with the word Hyperphantasia. The curiosity was instant and overwhelming. A quick Google search later, I found myself deep into an article on The Guardian by David Robson, unraveling the enigma of hyperphantasia. What I discovered was nothing short of mind-blowing, compelling me to dive deeper into this cognitive wonder. Enter William Blake, the artistic genius whose imagination blazed with such intensity that he scarcely needed real-world references. Blake's visions were so vivid and detailed that he could sketch as if mythical figures stood before him, flesh and bone. According to his biographer, John Higgs, these imaginary muses were as temperamental as real models, sometimes shifting or disappearing entirely, leaving Blake to exclaim, I can't go on, it is gone. I must wait till it returns. This level of vivid mental imagery, now known as hyperphantasia, sets the stage for our exploration. Hyperphantasia isn't as rare as you might think. In fact, it's believed that around 1 in 30 people experience this vivid mental cinema. Take Matt's home, for instance, a Norwegian hyperphantastic living in Stockholm. Matt's can visualize the entire city around him, navigating through a mental map with the precision of a drone. This intense form of visualization transforms their inner world into a second reality offering both extraordinary creative potential and unique challenges. Researchers are now delving into this once overlooked form of neurodiversity, hoping to unlock secrets that span from creative genius to mental health disorders. To quantify the spectrum of visual imagination, scientists use the Vividness of Visual Imagery Questionnaire, VVIQ, this tool asks participants to visualize scenarios like a sunrise over a hazy horizon and rate the clarity on a five-point scale. Most people score between 55 and 60, but those with extreme hyperphantasia achieve a perfect score of 80, painting mental pictures as clear as any high-definition photograph. This questionnaire is our gateway to understanding the extraordinary minds of hyperphantasics and the stark differences in how we all visualize the world. The journey into the realm of hyperphantasia began over a century ago with the controversial scientist Francis Galton. Known more infamously for his eugenics work, Galton's curiosity led him to explore the vividness of visual imagery. In 1880, he asked people to describe their breakfast table's illumination and detail. The responses varied wildly, from blank minds to those who could see every crumb in stunning clarity. Among these vivid visualizers was his cousin, Charles Darwin, who described his mental images as clearly as photographs. Despite Galton's initial efforts, the scientific community largely ignored this phenomenon until modern psychologists like Adam Zeman of Exeter University picked up the torch, revealing a thriving area of research. The implications of hyperphantasia extend far beyond mere curiosity. It profoundly influences careers and creative pursuits. 
Rishan Reader from Liverpool University notes that those with hyperphantasia often gravitate towards creative fields drawn by their vivid internal worlds. One participant, a writer, described her characters as acting out their parts right in front of her, making the writing process effortless. This intense visualization isn't just a quirky trait, it can shape lives, steering individuals towards professions where their imagination can flourish. Hyperphantasia also bestows its bearers with exceptionally rich autobiographical memories. Geraldine Van Heemstra, an artist in London, can recall her countryside walks with such clarity that every step and insignificant detail comes alive in her mind. This isn't just about recalling facts. It's about reliving experiences with emotional intensity. For people like Geraldine, their past is a vibrant tapestry, each thread a vivid memory intertwined with emotions and sensations. So what's happening inside the brains of hyperphantasics? Adam Zaman's research using fMRI scans has begun to unravel this mystery. His studies reveal that hyperfantastics have greater connectivity between the prefrontal cortex, responsible for higher order thinking, and the visual processing areas at the back of the brain. This enhanced connectivity means that when a hyperfantastic hears the word apple, their brain lights up as if they are seeing the fruit with their own eyes. For those with aphantasia, however, these connections are weaker making their mental images dim or non-existent. Interestingly, hyperphantasia isn't monolithic. It can manifest in two primary forms, object hyperphantasia and spatial hyperphantasia. Object hyperphantasia involves the capacity to imagine items in exquisite detail, like a painter envisioning every brushstroke before it hits the canvas. Spatial hyperphantasia, on the other hand, allows for an enhanced sense of orientation and the ability to visualize and manipulate objects in space. Matt's Holmes' ability to navigate a 3D cityscape in his mind is a perfect example of spatial hyperphantasia. These distinctions help researchers understand the diverse ways hyperphantasia can shape our inner and outer worlds. Interestingly, hyperphantasia seems to change over time. A large survey by Professor Ilona Kovac at Etvis Lorand University in Hungary suggests that hyperphantasia is more common among children and tends to fade across adolescence into adulthood. This phenomenon might be due to how our brains encode information differently as we age. In childhood, our brains store rich sensory details, which gradually give way to more abstract thinking. Only a small percentage of people manage to maintain this vivid imagery into their adult years, preserving the childlike wonder of their hyperphantastic minds. Hyperphantasia's profound vividness doesn't just enhance the pleasant memories. It can also amplify the traumatic ones. Researchers like Rashan Reader are investigating how hyperphantasia might exacerbate conditions such as PTSD and anxiety. Imagine reliving every traumatic moment in high-definition detail. It's easy to see how such intense visualization could worsen these conditions. Reader also speculates that hyperphantasia might influence the symptoms of schizophrenia, where vivid hallucinations could blur the lines between reality and imagination pushing the mind into distressing territories. In an intriguing study on pseudo-hallucinations, Reader had participants sit in a dark room watching a flickering light on a screen. This setup gently stimulated the brain's visual system, leading many to see simple illusions like geometric shapes. However, those with higher VVIQ scores experienced far more complex scenes stormy beaches, medieval castles, and even volcanic eruptions. Participants, perfectly aware that these were figments of their imagination, described the experience as psychedelic. This study highlights the power of hyperphantasia to turn the mundane into the extraordinary, even in controlled settings.
Understanding hyperphantasia can open doors to harnessing this ability in practical ways. Rishan Reader hopes that greater awareness will help people tap into their vivid imaginations for creativity and problem solving. Imagine artists creating from a place where their inner vision is as clear as the real world, or writers seeing their stories unfold in real time before their eyes. Recognizing and nurturing this skill could revolutionize how individuals approach creative tasks, making the imaginary vividly real and profoundly impactful. Many individuals with hyperphantasia express a sense of relief upon discovering there's a name for their vivid inner worlds. Geraldine Van Heemstra, for instance, found comfort in understanding why her experiences were so intense. It's not something I talk about loads, but I think it has helped me to realize why I experience things more intensely, which is comforting, she says. This realization not only validates their unique experiences, but also offers a community of others who see the world through the same vibrant lens. As research continues to unfold, the quest to understand hyperphantasia promises to shed light on the extraordinary capabilities of the human mind, celebrating the vivid imaginations that turn the ordinary into the extraordinary.